get to record something? That gets my goat. Why do they call it that gets my goat? I mean, it's just stupid. Chender. <laughs> hey folks, this is Richard Field. And I'm Big Anglovich. And I think this will be a very short That Gets My Goat, but uh, after the last one... Itsy bitsy teeny weeny shriveled little short... Your weenie. That Gets My Goat. This is 69, I believe. So should we probably should do something special 69, for it. 69, dude. Yeah, except for I'm not going to. I don't think you and I should be doing anything special for a 69 episode. All right. You know, just, uh, we'll leave that to others. Perhaps people can do something special whilst listening to this. There you go. But uh, yeah, a couple movies came out since we got together to record last that we said that we would do episodes about, and I don't know. Yeah, we talked a lot about both of these movies as they were, you know. During the development. Yeah, and leading up to. And so I figured it's only right for us to mention it now that we've seen them. And yeah, I don't know if anybody cares whether we liked John Carter or <laughs> The Hunger Games. But, you know, the, 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 the thing that's most remarkable to me about John Carter is that it was proclaimed a gigantic disaster long before it ever came out. Yeah. It was proclaimed, you know, the biggest loser of the year. And and about 20 years back, Waterworld had that same problem long before Waterworld came out. People were saying, oh, my gosh, this is going to sink Universal Studios. And, oh, that was kind of a pun. I didn't mean to be. People cared so much about how much it cost more than whether the movie was any good. And with John Carter, more so than I think with Waterworld or Titanic or or any of these movies that are really price tag heavy, they wanted it to fail. Did you get that impression? Was that you farting? It sounded like it came from behind me, strangely. It must have echoed off of the wall. Yeah, I did get that impression. Uh, I, I read somewhere where they're talking about various reasons as to why perhaps John Carter failed like it did. And that was one of the things that they mentioned. At least in America, they were saying that uh, worldwide press is not so much the thing. They don't they don't follow the script like uh, American press do. But it's like in America, they get a kind of a script that they're going to follow. They got a story that they want to tell about something. And John Carter was... Yeah, the story was that it cost a lot and it was going to be a giant failure. And when the movie itself came out, in foreign press, people talked about the movie. They said, yeah, the movie was this, the movie was that. In American press, it was all about how much it cost and how much it didn't make. They were all just busy trying to one-up each other with puns about, oh, yeah, this is the big disaster whatever they're i don't know what puns they used but you know it was just they were stuck to that script they didn't bother to even talk about the movie it was all oh it was about the the failure of it because it cost so much money and couldn't make that back and you know me you and i have talked about that before um the glee that people have no, 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 no. We've talked about you know, why do they have to spend so much money on films? Oh, that, yeah. It's not really necessary. They pro- I, I don't know where all that money went. It did look very nice. We went and watched it, and it was... It's a, up on the screen, that Yeah, budget. it was purdy. There was lots and lots and lots and lots of CG, and maybe that was why. Maybe they over epicked it up on that story. I'm not really sure. But it makes sense that a movie like that would cost a lot of money. Unlike The Lone Ranger, which is supposedly going to cost the same amount of money. Yeah, that one will be interesting because will the press get a hold of that budget and run with it and talk about that it was originally supposed to cost significantly more and they pared the budget down to just an obscene amount? (laughs) Or are they going to grab on to the Johnny Depp in red face and that's going to be the story. Uh, and again, we're not looking at whether the movie's good or not. We're looking at something else. And, and I wonder, was it a self-fulfilling prophecy that it was not a success because everybody had talked about this movie is coming and it's going to bomb? Oh, check out this. But the bomb opens in three more days. I, I don't know. That's so hard to know. It's possible. The more you talk about how it's going to be bad... 
And who's going to go and see something like that if they're just told again and again and again, oh, this is going to be a bomb? I, I don't know. Titanic is the only one I can think of right now where they dwelt so much on how much it cost and how difficult a process it was. It was supposed to come out summer of 97 and it didn't end up coming out until December of 97. Right. Yeah, they were all saying uh, James Cameron has made a three-hour chick flick. Is anybody going to go to it? But once it opened, people didn't talk about that anymore. And maybe it was good enough that it changed people's minds or it spoke to the people that it spoke to hard enough that their shouts outweighed everything else. Maybe it was the damn Celine Dion song. I don't know. <laughs> but they stopped talking about this movie that cost $150 right. million or 200 or whatever it cost back then. And with John Carter, we never got any of that. I mean, people didn't even really... Well, some people talked about the Of Mars debacle. And here's the thing. Somebody at Disney screwed up because the whole point of dropping the Of Mars was so that it would appeal to women. That is ostensibly, that's what they said. That was their mark of no woman would go see a movie with Mars in the title. But they didn't market John Carter to women. There were no TV spots and trailers and ad campaigns that were all about the romance and this star-crossed thing and can a Martian princess fall in love with an ex-Confederate soldier. And it was all CG monster gorillas and uh, green aliens and, and all that stuff. Which it would have been anyway, right. calling it John Carter of Mars. Yeah, it would have uh, at least given you something to latch on to with a title like John Carter of Mars as opposed to just John Carter, which is as dull as it can be. But we went and watched that movie and uh, it didn't get good reviews. Like I think Rotten Tomatoes had it at somewhere around a 50 or so, but... I watched it and I had a good time and I didn't feel like I wanted my money back or my time back or any of that kind of stuff that sometimes happens when you watch other films. So I don't know. Well, how much did your expectation color that? Because I went to it wanting to like it and wanting to prove all those people wrong. <laughs> I don't know why. I just I was invested in it almost like I had some kind of personal stake. And maybe it was because we had followed the production step by step by step and seen all of this stupid, empty controversy. It's not really even controversy, but just, you know, these non stories about it or, 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 or troubles or problems with it that shouldn't have had anything to do with it. I, I wanted it to be good and I wanted it to be successful. I wanted those people that were saying Disney is going to have a $200 million write off a month before it came out to be wrong. And I, I did like it. I didn't think it was perfect and I, there were problems with it. And I think part of it was that it was just too much, too epic, too many characters and plot lines and things. You know, when you put that much into a movie like that, it's hard to satisfy all of those plot lines and all of the characters right. and, and every question that you raise. Can you answer every question satisfactorily? And it ended, I, I'm not sure how long a movie it was, but w w it ended with a sequel set up. And I was like, oh, well, I, I'm satisfied. You don't, you don't have to. I, I, I know this has already lost money, even though it's been out for two and a half hours <laughs> and we're never going to see a sequel, but uh, you know, I'm satisfied with this movie and I don't know if that was the way to go. I certainly don't want them to do a golden compass or something like that, where it's just, it ends with more stories promised to come that are never going to come. But at the same time, I didn't feel like we needed a series of films after that, I don't know. That's just my opinion. And I, I know there were people that said that, oh, it sucked. And these actors were terrible. And the dialogue was terrible. And I've even heard people say that the special effects were terrible. And so, you know, everybody sees different things. Uh, but I wonder about those people that said, suck, suck, sucks, terrible, if they wanted to hate it right. going into it. Like I wanted to like it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I was... As invested in it, I, I didn't go in with, with a feeling like you were talking about there. I was actually more afraid because that's all I'd heard was bad, bad, bad about it. Afraid that it was going to be bad. And 
I never felt that way about it. I don't know. I've heard lots of people say terrible things about some of my favorite movies of all times. I mean, there are lots of people that complain and complain about how awful Star Wars is. But I loved Star Wars and it doesn't matter what those people say. I still enjoyed it. The terrible acting, I, it didn't ever bother me. I would say there was as bad of acting in Star Wars, if not worse in many places than there was in this movie. So I don't know if I... It's weird. So I was talking about that. I, I talked to people afterwards. I went and all the people that I knew at work, I was like, did you see that? And what did you think? And most everybody said, yeah, I liked it. They did see it. Several people had. And I was just like, I don't know what it is. I, I feel, especially since I was a film student, so I should know films and be able to just pinpoint what was wrong or something like that. I feel weird. Like there's there's something wrong with me because I liked that. Mm. I liked the movie and nobody else did. So what was wrong with me? What did I miss? We were going to do it. an episode about that someday, <laughs> but not today. I was at work the day that it came out, uh, if you recall, and I got off early. And so you and I were able to go see it when it came out. But the next day at work, I was stuck next to this dude. And he was like a super geeky dude and he had his laptop and he was talking about, he had also seen it and he was talking about all the movies that were coming out this summer and what was going to be good and what was going to be bad. And I often try and keep my opinions to myself when I'm not in front of a microphone, just because I can be caustic and I, I am really strong in my opinions. You know, he was talking about how, how shitty Amazing Spider-Man was going to be and and all that. And I, I'm trying to keep an open mind on that. You know, it, it may be. I, I don't think a reboot needed to happen. And anybody who says that it did, put me in a ring with them, man. <laughs> but the thing that he kept bringing up for some reason, it was, it was weird. Because, see, Andrew Stanton directed John Carter. Andrew Stanton, the Pixar director, who did WALL-E and Finding Nemo. And he said, this geeky guy said, well, Andrew Stanton is no Brad Bird. And I was just like, oh, the Ratatouille guy? And I recognize that he also made Incredibles and Iron Giant. But uh, he said, well, B Brad Bird did, had his live action debut. He did Mission Impossible 4, and that movie was friggin' awesome. And I had to admit, you know, I, I didn't see yeah, Mission I Impossible 4. Yeah, I have seen that. Didn't see like, Mission oh, Impossible you, you 3 or Mission Impossible 2. He says, you got to see it. It's so... Oh, you will recant every positive thing you've ever said about John Carter. <laughs> and so uh, I had that in mind. And Mission Impossible 4 was at, at the cheap theater. And I asked my niece, you know, do you want to go see that? Or you want to see We Bought a Zoo? Or do you want to see Man on a Ledge? You know, there were there was a bunch of movies that were there that I hadn't seen. And I let her pick. And, and she said, you know, let's go see Mission Impossible. And we, we went and it was sold out. And I said, well, you know, it, it starts in another three hours. So maybe we could just buy a ticket to something else. We could see Man on a Ledge. And then we'll go to Mission Impossible when it lets out. And so we did that. And it was all ready. It was sold out again. <laughs> and I said, oh, don't, don't worry about it. I'll talk to your mom. We'll get another night out of this and we'll do it then. And so we tried to go again. Exactly the same dang thing happened, except for this time we didn't try to buy the 10 o'clock ticket because it was already sold out. Both of them were sold out. So we ended up seeing we bought a zoo. But the next night she was gone. And I was just like, shoot, now I, I'm almost driven to see this damn <laughs> Mission Impossible movie because I, I didn't fill in all the details, but I tried four times to see Mission Impossible 4. So I went and in the back of my mind, there was this dude saying, you know, you will take back all the good stuff you had to say about John Carter when you see this movie. And I, I wanted to dislike Mission Impossible 4. I hate the 1996 Mission Impossible. I hate that movie to the point where, yeah, put me in a ring with somebody that likes it. I hate anybody who liked it. And my cousin really likes that movie. And he says, the reason I didn't like it is because I'm too dumb to get it. Ah. And I remember people saying that in 1996. Yeah. Uh, those people are dead now. You got in a ring with them and beat them to death. No, no. It was a pistol with a silencer on it. And then a few years later, Mission Impossible 2 came out and people were saying, well, it's different. It's, it's like a comic book. You, you don't have to use your brain at all. Enjoy this. 
And I didn't like Mission Impossible 2 because it was so fake and phony and Warner Brothers cartoony and it was a live action. I mean, these people did stuff that Superman wouldn't be able to handle. <laughs> I mean, it was too silly and all that. Anyhow, I saw Mission Impossible 4. And expectation means nothing, I guess. It was so unbelievably good. Mm-hmm. They that my estimation of about John Ratatouille has changed. <laughs> That's how good Mission Impossible 4 was. I think I, my my mouth was open through half of it because I was like, wait, no, wait. How is this movie so good? Where does the blame, the opposite word for blame, but I'm going to use blame, fall? Is it Brad Bird? Is he really that good? Is it that Tom Cruise and you know the producers were all more invested in this one than they were in the previous three? Is it these screenwriters, these these people whose names I didn't recognize, but are doing the Michael Bay produced Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle remake? Teenage Alien Ninja Turtles. That, yes, that people are saying Teenage Alien Invader Ninja Turtles because it's taint. <laughs> <laughs> These are the, the screenwriters wrote that. And I was like, well, maybe that taint will be really good because this movie was that good that it, it called into question all my beliefs of, you know, how, how could this movie, I don't know how this movie could have been that good because I don't give a crap one about Ethan Hunt. I think that's a terrible name. The Tom Cruise character that's been in these four movies. I'm not even really a Tom Cruise fan. But I cared about these characters. And unlike the previous movies, I felt like they could actually lose. They were actually in danger. And there were moments. And, and I think if I had to put my finger on what it was that made me respond so strongly to this movie, it was that they all screwed up at one point or another and failed. And you don't see James Bond do that unless it's Daniel Craig playing him. These these guys are always so perfect, and they they're the kind of people that don't look back to see the explosion. They just keep walking, kind of thing. You know, they, they, they the, Tom Cruise would always be replaced by a CG Tom Cruise because he could do these amazing things that a person couldn't really do. And in this one, they were human beings, and you felt their pain. You felt them suffer and struggle and almost succeed and then have the success taken away from him. And that made me invest myself in these characters and want them to win. And it felt like the stakes were actually real. My friend Jeff loves the James Bond series and I love the Indiana Jones series. And I always felt like the difference between James Bond and Indiana Jones is that Indy has a whip. Okay, there you go. I, yeah, I never even thought of that. And a hat. But he was always in over his head and he was always in pain and the underdog and it, it's encapsulated perfectly when he fights that German mechanic and he punches that guy like four times as hard as he can and the German kind of chuckles and then he punches Indy once and he goes down. I mean, it's just like, wow, that Bond would never get his ass kicked like that. That's why I loved, I mean, not the only reason, but I, that's why I responded to Indiana Jones in a way I didn't respond to James Bond. And I'd always felt like these Mission Impossible movies were just like an even more ludicrous version of the James Bond kind of thing. But not in this one. Anyway, I'm sorry, that was a tangent, but I, I felt like I needed to say that to somebody. I still don't know. It threw my whole worldview into question that I could care so much about this fourth movie in a franchise that I've never cared about. And I liked Mission Impossible 3, but Mission Impossible 4 was so much better. Why? How? <laughs> and and that's, a, that's a question that may never get answered. I don't know. You know, if you saw a movie series and they were all meh and then suddenly Breaking Dawn Part 2 is Oscar caliber, you'd be like, well, what changed? How is this possible? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen it, so I couldn't even say. But I, you know, I've heard that it's really good. What from Mission others? Than Ghost you. Protocol, right? And it's Brad Bird, who I like. I don't love. Like, uh, you know, I'm 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 with you in that Ratatouille is uh, it's all right, but it's not one of my favorites. But I did really like Incredibles. Iron Giant is about even with Ratatouille, as far as I'm concerned. 
I know a lot of people think it's great for some. It reason, really spoke to a lot of people, yeah. But uh, I was never one of those that cried at the end of it or something like that. I saw some list somewhere where they were talking about. They said, "Here's a bunch of science fiction movies that are better than Star Wars or Serenity." And then they started listening them, and I was like, "Oh, okay, I can give you that. Okay, I can probably give you that. Okay, no, now you've gone too far." And Iron Giant was one of those where I'm like, come on. And that was the weird part is the early ones, the ones that were higher up in the list, like number 10, number 9, those ones was like, oh, okay, I guess so. And then it's like number 5, no, 4, 3. It got worse and worse as it got closer. Well, can you give me an example of a movie? I did, Iron Giant, the example. Well, another one because <laughs> – I, and, and, you I know, I, I have a bias. Rest. I I love Star Wars beyond – Mm -hmm. The level that you love movies. There's not fuck serenity compared to Star <laughs> Wars, dude. I'm sorry, man. Star Wars is it with a like the Stephen King book, capital I and T. Yeah, it just makes me wonder, well, what ten movies beyond Iron Giant are better than Star Wars? And I I'm afraid I can't remember. I'm sorry. I think uh Clockwork Orange was one of them. I guess some people really dig on it, but it's not my thing, so I had to disagree there as well. Okay, well, please, please tell me Equilibrium was not on that list. No. But what I was saying about all the, you know, I would fight somebody that likes, fill in the blank, all of those movies that I mentioned are better than Equilibrium. I, I couldn't have sex with a woman that liked Equilibrium. Sorry. As if that was even going to be a, a problem. Uh, and You so mean you couldn't pay to have sex with a woman that liked Equilibrium? <laughs> So that brings us to The Hunger Games. I'm sure there have been movies in between John Carter and Hunger Games, so we don't have to talk about all of them. Uh, it came out, and that was... What was the story of Hunger Games? Oh, the bazillion dollars that it made. Oh, but this was even before it came out. Hunger Games is going to break all these records. Oh, right. Hunger Games is going to do... And, and that's fine. I mean, people were excited about it, and I'm glad that... There weren't tons of parents groups up in arms before it came out. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> Maybe somebody had addressed the parents groups and said, listen, the camera's going to be so spastic, you won't see any child on child <laughs> violence at all. The movie came out and it broke box office records. I think it had a hundred and hundred and fifty five hundred and fifty five million dollar opening. That's a dark night level opening. For a non-sequel in March, nobody could have predicted it was going to be that successful. And I, I'm sure that we'll get tons of backlash because whenever something is really successful. Really successful. Yeah. yeah, that's something that happened. I mean, while we were sitting in the theater waiting for the movie to start, there was a guy a few seats over from us that was, oh, it's not the Hunger Games. But, uh, you know, it sounds like a guy whose wife dragged him out to see it hadn't read the books beforehand or any of that kind of stuff to be prepared for what it was like and was reacting to being there as though he was being sat in front of the next Twilight movie. So uh, there's obviously going to be that kind of a backlash coming along, I think. But I, I don't know. I thought it was a fine film. I enjoyed it. Uh, like you said, the cameraman was too spastic. That was my big complaint is that it was all handheld camera for some reason all over the place. And they would do stupid things like they're in the middle of panning across something and they'll cut in the middle of that pan and it'll be another panning shot and they'll cut right into the middle of it. Uh, it was just frustratingly shot and edited almost to, enough to make you wish that you'd taken some Dramamine before you went into the theater because it was just all over the place. And it didn't seem to have a good reason for it either. It's like, well, this is the tense scene that she's going out to see Gale in the forest? Yeah, that's how the movie began. And yeah, it was a dark portent for the rest of the movie for me. That Yeah, she's walking and you see townspeople in the background and the cameraman is jittering around like, 800 cups of coffee and his bladder is about to explode and he's trying not to sneeze and he's got tracker jackers crawling up his back <laughs> were they jackers or jackets i think they were jackers i thought they were jackets when i read the book and then later found that i was wrong just saw it as a t in my head as i read it but yeah i think it's actually tracker jackers 
luckily, I, it's funny too because my friend's wife was sitting right next to us, and she'd gone to like the midnight show day or two before so she'd already seen it and she was like oh it settles down a little bit later and i was like oh okay and then it didn't settle down and it didn't settle down and it didn't and i was just like geez when because we're like a third of the way through the movie here by now when is it going to stop doing this and it did finally eventually settle down which was what i didn't understand when it got to actual tense moments they weren't doing that anymore they were only doing that at regular normal periods which i just didn't understand it at all why someone would do that i've had people try and explain that to me that you know it's like well this generation is so breastfed on youtube videos and camera phones and all that 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 feels immediate to them that feels tense to them that feels real to them well f this generation <laughs> listen that is not good filmmaking a good filmmaker can direct your eye to where he wants it to go. He can make you feel the way he wants you to feel without doing this silly, stupid... It's, I, I don't want to call it a gimmick because everybody does it. It's just a... I, I'm, I'm sorry. I feel like my mom talking about bad words in movies. It's not necessary, but it isn't, man. And And for her to walk toward the fence and the camera to be just shaken like there's some kind of earthquake going on like squirrels in my pants nobody can explain to me why that was necessary i mean later she has these hallucinations and i felt like those were easier to take yes. than this stuff was and the, I, the camera stayed steady and just like things blurred in and out and that kind of stuff whereas yeah the rest of it was just i hope that enough people complain about it that they lay off it in the next movie because it's already too late to save this one. But unfortunately, it'll probably be all the same people in charge and will therefore be pretty much the same. But on the good side, the script was really well written and it was a really good adaptation of the book. It was very faithful and uh, didn't leave you... At least I didn't think it would leave you confused and going, oh, what's going on here? Oh, I wish I'd read the book. Like some... Like a, uh, Harry Potter 6, for example, was that way where I felt that they didn't tell you enough, or uh, you know. But uh, this one was, it was a good movie. I enjoyed it. It was well done. Aside from that, stylistic choice would have been 100% better and would have been absolutely, would have been nearly a perfect film probably had it skipped that annoying feature. Well, I don't want to rain on your parade. We just got our asses kicked, man. It's kind of like the Transformers movies. If you have complaints about the Transformers 1 or Transformers 2, and yet they made $400 million each domestically, they're not going to change. They're not going to fix what was wrong with those movies. You know what I mean? They have no incentive to make them better. Right. And the one review I read of Hunger Games before I saw it said the opposite. It said that this movie was destined to be successful because so many people had read the books. I mean, it had a built-in audience, a guaranteed X number of dollars it was going to make. Gary Ross, who was the director, didn't have to make this good a movie, but he did anyway. And so good for him kind of thing. And I, I was like, wow, wow, that's good to hear. Uh, Gary Ross directed Pleasantville. I wasn't a fan of that one. But the emotion was there. I, I think Jennifer Lawrence was a great choice. She's, I, I like her. I don't know. The movie is successful, and I would rather it be successful than something that I find badly written or made, although I think I've essentially said that it was badly made. The, the weird thing is there were a lot of comparisons to Twilight, and... And there was when and I saw some had it attached the teaser for Breaking Dawn Part Two to all the prints of yeah. Hunger Games. Also, the uh, the host. Oh, well, see, I didn't see that on the one that I went to. There was the host and Breaking Dawn Two on mine. I felt like the, the, a lot of the ad campaign was this is the new Twilight. This is like Twilight. If you like Twilight, come to this. And maybe it's only natural because the same 
age group or, or target audience liked the Twilight books that liked the Hunger Games thing. Yeah, and but, Twilight was a big money maker, so why not try and get those people to come and spend all their money on yours as well? I mean, it's like everything that was slightly similar to Harry Potter, like, this is the next Harry Potter. Come see this and spend your money on it. Harry oh, Potter okay, was good. But, I was leading up to a but, having said that, you are a but. I saw spots for Hunger Games on ESPN during sporting events and stuff like that, like we hoped that they would do. Mm -hmm. There was an aspect of the movie that men wouldn't find repellent. That was So what was a, a guy like you doing watching ESPN? <laughs> well, my, my, my brother-in-law had it on. Ah, uh -huh, okay. And I was like, was that just a Hunger Games commercial during Sports Center? Holy crap. Which is cool. And I felt like the story was more universal, much right. more open to i don't know just it, it, it spoke to me in a way that twilight hasn't been able to hence you know it's a bigger hit just like we hoped months and months ago when we were talking about it for us it's so close it just came out for us mm -hmm. so we don't know all the ripples yet and we don't know if this is going to be another titanic i mean it practically has to be because it's made so much money but you know what made titanic what it was was people going again and again and again and keeping it up and almost making it a it was almost a religious experience for people to see titanic and it's like now i'm going to go to it with my mom or now my little sister i'm going to take her to see titanic You're like okay and it's sunday again it's time to go back and see titanic another time <laughs> that's not an exaggeration that's what it was i can see it being that way though like i said the people that we went to see it with what see i figured she bought a bunch of tickets when they were pre-sale then after buying them without even knowing she's like okay hey we got all these tickets do you want to come and see hunger games with us that night and we're like sure that's cool because we didn't buy tickets so we probably wouldn't have seen it opening weekend or whatever the deal was i don't know if it was 100 percent sold out but it was pretty bad around here yeah then when we went to see it with them that night she's like oh yeah i already saw it two nights ago on when it was the midnight showing so this person had already seen it once and was back again for the second time yeah my sister in two was the days. same way she saw it midnight show on thursday and then she saw it with us a couple days later and, and, and you know that's fine like i said if it speaks to you then that's great yeah I'm just and saying. i would rather that this speak to you than something else like the michael bay transformers movies i'll use that as an example i don't want to know somebody that that speaks to but this i'm like no i can get behind katniss and the hunger games and this cool future society i mean not cool but in unique i loved how garish uh -huh. like the wardrobe and the makeup and the you know all this the, there was some real talent put into that to make this just like an ultra corrupt ultra rich society of the future kind of thing and I had an argument with my sister because I said that there was no mention of District 13 in the movie. And she said that there was, but hopefully they will examine more of the dark side of this future society too and how bad it can get. And you saw this fantastic future city and to see, I mean, it looked like depression era South in District 12, I thought, right. and, and which is fine, which is great. I was yeah. going to say Depression Era West Virginia. Okay. Because they were coal miners. All right. You, you got me there. Yes, I did. I think that that's it. That whole religious thing of going to see it again and again and again seems like it's already begun. So I guess we'll see how much it winds up bringing in. But I think it's going to rake in plenty. Well, I can always get behind something, even if I don't appreciate it, if I can see what people appreciate about it. And in 97, 98, when Titanic was the phenomenon that it was, I didn't resent it as much as a lot of people because I was like, no, that was a well-made film. And like I've said before, everybody can relate to being stuck in a life that you don't want and, 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 and running off to live the way that you want to live and, and finding love and finding somebody that appreciates you and says that you're better than the people around you. And, and then what happens to him and it, she's, she's strong enough to rise up and she doesn't need all that wealth and stuff. She is able to make a life for herself. You know, I, there were these things where I was like, you know, that doesn't really speak to me because I'm not that person. But if it speaks to you, I, I can get behind that. And same with Hunger Games. I mean, more so for me because I found the books so good and so compelling, well-written, entertaining, scary, good stuff. 
And so, uh, you know, good for them. Good on you, as we once said, unfortunately. Yes, very unfortunate that. So uh, this has been Rish Outfield. And I've been Big Anklevich. And uh, may... The la- May the odds be ever in your favor. There you go. That's what I was going to say. Don't stop it. Here's a little postscript, though. Titanic's being re-released. By the time this hits air, Titanic will be in theaters again, it looks like. Is it possible that that phenomenon will continue, that, that people will be like, oh my gosh, Titanic was the number one movie at the box office again after all this time? Can you catch lightning in a bottle again? I don't think it'll happen, but you never know. I've seen that trailer many times. The the reissue 3D, see it as you've never seen it before trailer. And I, even I have to admit that I've been sort of like, wow, yeah, I, I kind of want to see that. Even though I own Titanic, I own the DVD, and I know I've never sat down and watched it from beginning to end. Uh, so, I mean, I would just be stupid to go <laughs> see it. But you can see it big in the theater. That's always kind but of I'm, fun. But I, I, yeah, it's just the way that 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 trailer, whoever put that trailer together, knew their stuff, and they have the Celine Dion song come yeah. just right at the end when it starts to happen, and they did a good job because it even makes me want to see it. Now, granted, I'm not somebody that's a Titanic hater, right? But it reminds me of back when Star Wars was being re-released in theaters in 96 when there it had those trailers were like, for generation, people have had to experience Star Wars like this. And they have the little TV on the screen and then the X-Wing flies all the way out of it and comes in and they're like, duh, it's your chance to see it in a theater. Yay. But yeah, I don't know. To me, Titanic, it's something that happened. I'm sure that that, that generation of kids the the people that were 12 to 17 years old when that movie came out they're probably all crap in their pants oh it's gonna be so great to go and see it again well i I can see it with my own kids now yeah that's kind of weird to think but it's it's weird to think but bring their own kids to see it but uh i don't know that it can happen again but it's possible well lion king did respectable business, but then nobody went to see Beauty and the Beast and also nobody went to see Phantom Menace. So I, you never know, but I I think sometimes it has to do with what else is there. And if there's nothing else, then heck yeah, let's go see Titanic. But I think there's going to be enough other things. How much after Hunger Games is Titanic? It's two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah, you yeah. get... Whatever comes out this week, which yeah. is Clash of the Titans 2 and something else. I think Mirror, Mirror. Yeah, I think it's probably even unlikely that it'll be Mirror, Mirror. But I don't think any of those two that you mentioned plus Titanic will be Hunger Games even in two weeks. I think it'll still be uh, kicking a lot of butt. Hmm. But I guess we'll see. By the time this comes out, everybody will know. So they'll be like... <laughs> Way to go, Big Anglovich. You're stupid. <laughs> well, I guess I'd better edit it quickly so we don't already, look stupid. That's where they already thought, so, you know. I well, I, I also wonder, if are there people at Warner Brothers that are like, wow, Hunger Games opened this big. How big is Batman 3 going to open? And they'll all be like buying yachts and helicopters and nights with Megan Fox in anticipation of Dark Knight Rises coming out and making, you know, $300 million its opening weekend, which I I don't think is possible. The reason being Hunger Games opened 3,000 screens and they were all sold out. How do you open on more? How do you have more opportunities for movies to make more money? The only way to do it more business is if you have the 3D gimmick and you can charge more or you make more theaters, you know? Yeah, maybe they'll start building real fast in anticipation of Batman 3 coming out. (laughs) All right. See you later, folks. Bye. That Gets My Go is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Today's show sucked more than usual. No, just about the same. Wow, well, I, off the air, what was the trailer for the host like? Was it was it a trailer or was it... It was a teaser. The, the Breaking Dawn thing was, there's a movie called Breaking Dawn Part 2 coming, and here's a line from it. <laughs> yeah, it was just a teaser. It was like, 
in the future, wars are over with. There's peace on Earth and all this stuff. And then it shows like somebody's eyeball really close. And you see there's something weird going on in their pupil. And then it starts showing like people of all different, you know, nationalities, etc. And they all have eyes like that because alien symbiotes have taken over the world. And that's why there's peace because aliens are peaceful, not us. See, what's weird is that sounds like, oh, hey, that sounds pretty solid. But of course, if you had said a teenage girl moves to Washington and discovers a family of vampires and a family of werewolves, I would have been like, wow, that sounds really good, too. 